morning everybody so we got all our fuel tanks filled up um we went and we had breakfast with the boat in front of us it was real nice uh her captain and then he's with his daughter and then there's another boat that is following them we had some pretty cool dock tails um i told him about my rudder and then he actually got caught between a barge and uh not the catamaran but the other guy in the power boat that is right there um got was in a lock hole and themselves and when they were in the lock it actually he got stuck between the wall and the barge and it kind of crushed his boat a little bit in the front anchor it stuck into the front of the boat he thought they were going to die. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. So I was pretty glad I never had to uh, go through a lock with a barge. Very glad. Very glad. Um, what happened is when the barge took off, the pressure from the props hit their boat. Um, there was a sailboat behind him. They lost the line. It started spinning because the wake from the props hits the back wall of the lock. And then it makes a circle with the current. And uh, then he didn't get behind the barge he was beside the barge and what happened is he ended up going sideways and then the barge came in and boom and crushed him up against the wall his bow and his stern of his boat hey puppy puppy we got the puppy over here from the boat ahead of us coming to say hi and hey puppy so we're gonna get everything ready and we'll head on out here all right paducah you were good to us. We were able to make it through that storm. There's some other sailboats there last night in the middle of the night. That one came in. I didn't get to talk to them. I don't know if they're a looper or not. I'm guessing they are. So our friend in the catamaran up there already headed out with him and his buddy. Thank you very much to them for a good morning, some good dock tails, and a good breakfast. This is the first home cooked breakfast meal kind of thing that I've had so it was wonderful so we're gonna head up to the Cumberland 20 miles north so we'll see how it goes so right there is where the Tennessee River starts and this way is the Ohio, and we're going to go up to the Cumberland. That way would be 20 miles shorter, but the way that the lock is right now, with all the extra traffic going up the Tennessee Tombigi compared to uh, the Mississippi because of the low water, there is a 7 plus hour wait for the lock. So, if we go this other way, it should be pretty much equal to the same as if we just went that way. Then we don't end up getting down there and just having to stop and anchor and be in everybody's way. The lockmaster, when I talked to him, he said there's not really a good spot to anchor um, because all the traffic, you're not going to really be out of anybody's way. So it's just best to go this way. We'll be out of everybody's way. We will... Uh, Wait, that's around a little island. Tennessee is up here with that bridge. There. And the Ohio goes up to the left. So that's like a little island outside Paducah there. Sorry about that. I went down at my Namonics and it showed there's that little island. So the Tennessee River goes, starts up farther. They do have the uh, channel markers if you did want to start that way. You definitely could. And then go through there and around. So, we're making five miles an hour. That's not bad. Especially going up river. Um, the wind is in our... From the... <coughs> Sorry, I have a dry throat. I gotta get some water. <clears throat> uh, so we have a headwind. So we'll have to be going into the wind today. We won't really be able to get to use the sail until we get up to the Cumberland. Because right now we're gonna pretty much head east 
and then we'll head northeast for a little bit and then when we head over into the Cumberland we'll start to go southeast and then southwest and so then we should have a tailwind and I will be able to throw out the sails then at the Cumberland and I will be able to sail down the Cumberland River. That's the plan for the day and if the wind uh, works with how the wind forecast was that's how uh, it should play out. It should be a pretty easy day. Nothing crazy should happen. It's just going up the river. Um, there's no locks or anything we have to get to for the end of the day right before Kentucky Lake. And that'll be really easy. And then we'll get right past the lock and head right over to Kentucky or uh, Green Turtle Bay, which is supposed to be one of the nicest inland marinas there is. So, I'm pretty excited to see how it is. They have a complimentary car you can use if you have a slip that you get there. Uh, they have showers, laundry rooms. Somebody said they had a pool. So, it'll be really cool to check out Green Turtle Bay after we've been roughing it. And then we'll be able to get our repairs and uh, get our rudder fixed. And I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, we'll be keeping the emergency tiller. I'm glad it's built. All I'll have to do is take off that back bolt and then we'll have that in our spare parts. And then uh, a friend, a fellow boater from the Great Loop Group who saw everything that was going on, saw that he had a cable in his shed from like 30 years ago with a boat that he took apart. And he is going to send it to me at Green Turtle Bay and hopefully then we'll be able to have the wheel again, which I'm excited about because I have to admit, I don't really like the tiller. You're sitting down, I guess you could make, I could loosen that back uh, bolt and then it's supposed to be able to swing. Or I could put some, uh, what I'd have to do is get some washers. Because what it is, is this board isn't wide enough. So when you tighten everything, it's the, this is the exact same width as the rudder. So it tightens it up so you can't move it. So you could, you know, pull it up and stand up, but it would be real inconvenient compared to standing at a wheel. And with the wheel and like with the barge wakes and everything, it's just easier. You have that wheel to hold on to to brace yourself in uh, high, like when there's big waves or whatever. And the wheel doesn't move unless you move it. Whereas with the tiller here, you're sitting down so you can't see as well. Um, when the boat moves around, you move around, so your arm moves the tiller as well, so it's not as easy to stay, I don't know, it's just not as easy as with the wheel in my opinion. I don't mind it, it's cool, you actually do feel the boat more, and uh, like when you're on the heavier waves, like when we were, first came up the Ohio River there, that was the crazy Anyway, it's just not as easy to hold on. It's way, way easier with wheels, in my opinion. I think that's why a lot of the offshore boats have wheels and not, uh, and not tillers. I don't know, it's a different experience. Like I was, sorry, before the radio went off, I remember what I was talking about that. The, uh, when we had all the barge waves first turned into the Ohio there, there were some good, good lakes, like, uh, two and three different directions, you know, it's one thing when you hit the bow of the boat into the wave, but when you have a two or three foot wave hitting you from the side, from the back, and the other side at the same time, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, and, uh, it's just way easier with a wheel, in my opinion. With the tiller, like I was saying, you get thrown all over. And then, uh, on our bus. then you cannot. Is there anything else that you got you need over there while he's on first? I gave him that lift to be made, but uh, is there anything else you can think of? I'll turn the radio down. But then you're moving too, and you're trying to keep the tiller straight. That's really good in my opinion, compared to 
having the wheel. And with the wheel, you're able to just let go of the wheel and move about the boat however you need and it stays right where you're going unless there's really really heavy seas and if there's really heavy seas you just tighten the wheel lock here and then you know that is not going to move anywhere and then you're you can move wherever you want whereas with the pillar here if you move it ends up uh, moving. And you either gotta have this rope tied up and make sure it's real tight, and it's a pain in the butt to try to get it perfectly straight and tight enough that it stays. Uh, where it's coming to, it moves up and down. So it still has a little bit of play. So it's just not the same as the wheel. In my opinion, if you have a Canyon 25 and have the ability to change to a wheel, Huge, huge upgrade. Huge. Makes it way, way easier. But also, you gotta remember then you gotta change your traveler for your main because standard, the traveler for the Catalina 25 comes off the back of the boom and then comes to the back here. And then the ropes, the lines would be in your way. Uh, we also, though, have a shorter boom on this boat than the standard Catalina uh, boom. It would, the standard Catalina boom would come back like another foot and a half, two feet, and then would come down. And if it came back that far when you're standing at the wheel here and hit you in the forehead, and then you'd go, boom! Not fun. So, uh, yeah, just all the real interesting things to, about the boat and the uh, things to think about and consider if you guys have the same kind of boat and uh, yeah if you guys have any comments definitely let me know if there's any things that you have found like ways to rig up the boat that aren't standard that make things easier because anything you can do to make life easier on the boat is a good thing I think we're going to end up passing this barge. They're only going like five miles an hour. We can go much faster, I think. So over there is the actual, that bridge there. That's where the Tennessee River starts. We're going to be going to the port side and up the Ohio. Tennessee River and Tennessee Tombigi is all down the river. Uh, 
Um, I was hoping we'd be done doing upriver stuff after Paducah, and then we'd get to Tennessee River and then go over to Kentucky Lake, which that little bit of the Tennessee would have been upriver, but uh, not very far compared to what we had to do today. <clears throat> we have to do almost double, but uh, it's worth it because of the lock wave time. In the Great Loop Facebook group, though, there are people that have said that they didn't call ahead and they just went that way, not knowing. And they've got through the lock down there on the Tennessee in like 20, 30 minutes. So, but I don't want to chance it. I don't want to end up having to wait six or seven hours. I just want to get to where we're getting and going. I don't like sitting and waiting. It makes me antsy. Whereas when we're moving, at least I feel like we're making somewhat progress. River is definitely a lot bigger. In my head, this is what the Mississippi looked like. But a lot of the Mississippi is a lot narrower than I thought it would be. And that could just be because of the low water, but there's a lot of places up north there that it's just not as wide as I thought. So this is kind of cool. This is, I feel like this is a big river. <laughs> I'm a dork. So everything seems to be going pretty good. We got five more miles here till uh, we get up to the split for the Ohio River. And hopefully once we make the turn, the wind will be at our, I believe, port side. And uh, we'll be able to use that as we head down to Green Turtle Bay. So right now we're kind of making the turn upward. The wind's kind of coming from, well now there's no wind, but it's kind of coming from the east when we did have it a little bit ago. So once we make this turn, we'll be able to head up there, we'll be able to use the wind, and then when we come down we should be able to use it as well. At least that's what I'm hoping. Pretty cool here. I don't know what it is, but it's sunk. I don't know if it's something that was like a floating pier and then because the water went down so far it fell over or what, but it's kind of cool little. Kind of cool. Kind of waiting here behind this barge. For these three here to go by on the corner. <clears throat> Them going up yeah, there. They're making like six. I make like five and a half. So we were they were slowly making it ahead of us for a while, but now on this turn they slowed way down, so I might be able to make it past this barge here. Oh, there he's hitting at the moment. So I better be careful. Because that's when you get the wake. So this is pretty cool over here. So I better watch. I'll be paying attention here once that the screws from the barge there, once he kicks it into gear going to push the water back at us. So, we'll give her some throttle here and we'll head on up river. Here you can definitely see as well how low the Ohio River is too. You know all you hear about is the Mississippi but all of the rivers are low here. Definitely kind of have to see how it is on the Cumberland and then the Tennessee Tom B. <clears throat> I know in the Great Loop Facebook group, people have been talking about that it's definitely not as high as it normally would be as well. We press on. Ohio, over there is kind of like a little inlet 
thing and then that way is where we're going. Uh, Rick Harvard or whatever the name is up in front of us. They just radioed. They're getting ready to turn over there. So that was real nice of them. So I didn't cut, try to cut over there and then they turn and I hit them or something. So it's definitely nice to be able to have the radio and talk to everybody and uh, just communicate. It makes everybody's life a lot easier. So, we'll get up here and uh, make the turn into the Cumberland. Alright, we're heading into the Cumberland. There's a place for barges to tie up, I'm guessing, before they head up into it. And that looks like one that was, and uh, it is not anymore. So we're still heading up behind uh, this barge. I was hoping they were going to keep going on the Ohio uh, when we were back behind them up when we first started today, but now that they're up there, I'm kind of glad because they can radio ahead if they uh, need to do anything or if there's any bridges or anything. I know if they can get under it, I can get under it. So, it makes it a little bit easier of a day. You just got to stay off to the side so you don't have the like, double going up river effect of their crop weight. Stay behind and over to one side because also their uh, screws can kick up stuff off the bottom of the river if you don't want to hit. We do not want to hit anything again.
had them on eBay for like 20 bucks, solid stainless steel old brackets. Probably more than the $20 that I paid for those brackets, but they ended up being essential and life-saving for this our emergency tiller. And now we will always have this emergency tiller with us on the boat. And uh, if anything ever happens again, we'll be able to quite easily just throw it back on the tiller, which is good. That is good, good, good. So, I'm excited to be able to get the rudder off and remount it. I'll videotape that and then I'll uh, open up the pedestal here and pull out the piece that we need and uh, get the cable all switched out.
we can go five, six miles an hour, and it can, but anytime it made a turn, it slowed down. And I didn't want to be too close behind it and have it kick up something from the river. And then now coming up to Cumberland, we had to pull over and stop three times for uh, barges coming the other way. He pulled over, so I pulled over too, just to make it easier. And uh, then I could listen to the radio when he was getting close to anything. I could hear when he would radio him and whatnot. So. I'm going to get anchored here. I have radioed the lock and they have another two hour wait because that harness got to get through and then there was another one coming the other way. So I'll be back once we get to anchor. Alright, so the Barkley lock master called and told us to move up right when I was getting ready to anchor there. So we're going to move up here a little and we've got to wait for that barge that was ahead of us still. He's up on the wall. And there is one that is in lock getting ready to leave. So we're gonna keep on heading towards Green Turtle Bay here. Alright, so the barges went through, now it's time for the tow boat. And then hopefully we'll be able to get through. And then we'll get to Green Turtle Bay. It's almost midnight. This has been a long, long day. This will be one of the biggest locks we've went through. We're going to have a 78 foot up. It's kind of cool. I thought I'd show you guys. Something you don't ever really get to see because you never sit on the other side of the lock door. And they're not totally watertight. Good thing we didn't tie up there. We would have been wet. <laughs> so it's almost 12:30 now. Hopefully we'll get to go through soon. We made it in, and this is definitely a big one. 78 feet. So far, so good. We're going real fast. These floating bollards are real easy. They don't make the creepy Halloween noise like the one did. Looks like somebody put a sticker on there from their boat. Motor vessel Sea Shine. Interesting. So up up we go and definitely goes quick on this one. Alright, we're almost at the top. The first part went real quick, the second part took about as, well the first fourth went real quick and the last three fourths took as long as the first, uh, wait that didn't make sense, I'm getting tired. Anyway the first part went real quick and it kind of slowed down as you go up and they must do that so they don't overshoot or something. So just a little bit further and then we'll be able to head into Kentucky Lake. And it's two miles to Green Turtle Bay. We can call it a night because I am beat. I am definitely beat. My mustache looks pretty crazy. I need to shave. We'll definitely probably be shaving here in Green Turtle Bay. Alright, we're done with that one. We made it. We're into Kentucky Lake. Now we just gotta head south two miles and make it over to the marina. Coming in here is a little crazy. It's a very, very shallow opening, maybe 50 feet across. And then once you get in here, everything's all lit up. So we made it out of dock. Well, that's it, folks. We made Green Turtle Bay. We did it. I'm going to call it a night. I am beat. I will see you guys tomorrow.